Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the webinar today. My name is Jason Curtis, and I'll be presenting the 3D Experience Virtual Build Solution, which is a uh, complete integrated platform for creating and managing MBOM content, uh, for creating balanced process plans, for validating those plans in the context of a plant layout, and even for creating 3D configured work instructions that can be delivered to the shop floor using nothing more than a web browser. So this is uh, a really a very exciting and rich solution that has a lot of powerful capabilities that, that in our brief time today, we're not gonna be able to cover everything. So really the point of the webinar today is really intended to be an introductory look at the solution uh, and with some live demonstrations, uh, a, a conversation starter, if you will, for how the virtual build solution is going to improve the efficiency of manufacturing plans, uh, help you achieve first time right for introducing new products into the line and, and how to uh, shorten the learning curve for production workers. So, uh, so this webinar has a lot to do with how to address key concerns for manufacturers as they prepare to manage an ever increasing number of uh, products and ever increasing number of variants and customs running through the line and, and deal with the increasing demands to meet higher volume targets and rate targets. So today through a series of three very short demonstrations, I'm going to show you how the virtual build solution answers the key questions for manufacturing like, how do we build a balanced plan so that resources aren't overburdened? How can we possibly ensure quality with so much variation in our products? Uh, how do we deliver work instructions to the shop floor? And, and, and as important as that, with new product introduction, when things are very dynamic, uh, how do we efficiently and effectively keep everything updated as and manage changes? So I, I don't think it would come to any surprise to anyone uh, to when I say that yeah, I believe the industry is at a point where it's very challenging to do manufacturing planning under these complex constraints, especially using today's as-is process that, that typically relies on paper documents or, or at least electronic documents and past experiences and tribal knowledge. You know, there's a quite a bit of inefficiency in in the separate repositories and the multiple unrelated docu document formats. Uh, uh, for instance, the engineering bill of materials is typically uh, shared as an Excel spreadsheet, and that then is converted into a manufacturing bill of materials, which is another Excel spreadsheet. And maybe the process plan is a block diagram or maybe some Visio uh, type of document. And then there's uh, maybe the shop floor is trying to create some standard operating procedures so they get some screen captures of static points in time of the design or maybe digital pictures from a prototype that's being built, which at best makes the shop floor documents out of date because they, they don't match the actual product being built. Um, and in worst cases can be very difficult to understand. So in, in this kind of a disjointed process where everything is a separate repository, it's really laborious to, to communicate information and change management is a very big issue. Uh, and, and, and further to that, even visualizing some of these manufacturing tasks for uh, performing validations or for training tasks, where there's really nothing visual about an Excel file, so this becomes very challenging. And then you, know, you start to throw in the complexity of multiple variants, it becomes very time intensive to ensure that you have a mature uh, process plan. So if we look at the virtual build solution, on the other hand, the 3D experience connects all of the assets through a single integrated environment. So how do we address the key questions for manufacturing? Well, we plan, balance, and document in the virtual world. So the, the virtual build solution centers around providing a, a significant leap in, in planning efficiency and in quality by giving the planners a connected platform to assemble the product to balance the line and document the procedures all in the virtual world. Because there is a complete digital thread between what is being produced, where and how it will be produced, 
and the resources needed to produce it. So if I had to answer the question, what is virtual build? In, in, in three short words, in essence, it's a complete platform to visualize the assembly sequence, to validate that build specifications conform to product design, and to document, to derive very easy to understand work instructions for the shop floor. Okay, so let's move to a series of three brief live demonstrations that illustrate these three core values of the solution to visualize, validate, and document. So the first demonstration is going to highlight the capabilities that allow us to reuse the engineering data and visualize the process plan, the product buildup, to quickly arrive at a very mature pro uh, manufacturing plan. Okay, so the first thing is just talking about the aspects of visualization. So being able to visualize the engineering data, whether this engineering data initiates uh, from, from any CAD system, it could be CATIA V5, it could be SOLIDWORKS, it could be Creo, it could be native 3D experience CATIA, but to be able to visualize the product structure coming from engineering reuse the graphical information, reuse the attributes from the build material to generate our own manufacturing build material. Okay, So this manufacturing build material was actually generated in one click from the CAD structure, so to, to mimic that CAD structure. And from there, that was just the starting point. So this was completed by uh, creating, uh, you know, adding additional uh, continuous materials, maybe grease or paints or things that didn't exist in the CAD model. Uh, it can work with alternates or substitutes, you know, a complete, uh, a complete set of tools for managing the, the build of material and uh, restructuring it uh, so, so that if we want to assemble parts differently than how they were assembled in the CAD, and we have those tools and capabilities uh, to do that inside of this. And again, this allows us to visually navigate our manufacturing bill of material and navigate the structure visually. Okay. So the other part of the visualization is connecting CAD and the or the EBOM and the manufacturing bill of material. So we can visualize things like the product assignment status or have we consumed all of the parts from the engineering bill material into our manufacturing bill material. So with the uh, color-coded overlay, I can see that I have a couple of parts that still need to be implemented into my manufacturing bill material. So through a simple drag and drop, I can place those in the uh, appropriate uh, uh, subassembly of my MBOM and see instant feedback and visualize that feedback directly on the screen. And now this manufacturing bill of material is what we're going to use to create our process plan. So we can visualize the process plan as well. So what we see here are three substations that feed a final assembly station. Okay. And then inside of these stations are operations that are being performed that have operational times associated with them and even process flows. So how, what comes first, what comes next and what comes after and so on and so forth. And then the MBOM is used to feed a visual representation into this process plan. So for instance, let's visualize which components have been consumed by the process plan. And again, I have a uh, color-coded overlay that tells me that these two components have not yet been handled by the process plan. So instead of trying to uh, look through uh, an Excel spreadsheet and identify these and compare uh, two Excel spreadsheets or, uh, uh, or other documentation, now we have a very visual way to ensure that all of our products in our bill of material have been consumed by the process plan. And then I continue to define in which order these products are being assembled. Okay, all of this very graphically. So, you know, we talk about tools like Gantt charts and 
uh, process plans and block diagrams. Well, this is a 3D visual block diagram. And simply by the action of me dragging and dropping my MBOM items into the plan and creating this visual sequence, it's automatically creating my Gantt chart for me. Now, where are these times coming from? This is where we can visualize uh, the times as well. So if we take a look at these new brackets that I added, uh, you'll, you'll see that there's operational times on each of these tiles indicated by the numbers. And what we can do is define what those times are, basically either an estimated time, let's say we're in the, the beginning of our planning, and as I update that, you can see the impact on the operation, the installation operation, uh, or perhaps we've this is uh, currently in process and we've measured the time and for what re whatever reason, you know, it's indicated that it's longer. So now we can compare and visualize just by changing some attributes, compare the impacts on our process plan of what we estimated versus what we've measured or perform even some kind of time study using uh, time study standards and, and see the impacts of our overall process plan. So these individual operation times actually roll up uh, into a total time that can be compared now to our TAC time. So we can visualize, instead of having to use an Excel spreadsheet or a calculation, the platform is doing all of this for us and providing us with very visual information and feedback uh, about our process plan. Okay. Along with that, because the MBOM and the process plan are in the same platform, and because we know the sequence of operations, and each of these operations has a visual uh, graphical 3D geometry from the engineering data, we can get a 3D visual buildup of the assembly process automatically just based on this information, okay? So everything is very visual. That's the first core value of the solution is that everything is very visual in virtual build. So now that we've visualized this process plan and the MBOM and the engineering bill of material, let's take a look at another demonstration of how we can validate this process plan to either understand and implement engineering changes or to identify and solve problems early on, uh, as well as study the impacts of running multiple variants and product models on the same assembly line. All right, so let's validate our process plan. So we have a, uh, a completed process plan. Let's take a look at maybe some validation tools that we can use to check maybe my system's utilization. Let's find out where I might be overburdened, where I might have uh, more tasks than are possible given the resources. So uh, through the use of some of these color-coded uh, dashboards again, which are, are configurable to the values that, that mean the most to you, but I can quickly see here where I have more operations than time available to meet my tack time for this station. And if I pull up my work balancing chart here, I can see uh, just by hovering over the operations which are being taken place and then the size of the blocks indicate, you know, relatively is the time compared to one another. And I can see that maybe, maybe I can just take this last operation from this first station and make it the first operation of the second station. You know, so I can make informed decisions and begin to validate and balance my plan very easily by drag and drop and then dynamically and instantly see the results of that uh, to, to validate my process plan. Okay. So another aspect of validation is what about the val uh, validating the impacts of engineering changes or variants. Okay? So in this instance, I do have, uh, we've built this process plan based on one product model, one product line here, the, uh, the, the standard seat. And this comes with a certain set of uh, 
motors and track assembly for uh, providing some motion to the seat. Uh, but there's also now a new variant. Okay, so to, let's take a look at a Uh, what is different between these models? How much of my process plan can I reuse? What are the impacts going to be on my process plan? Well, Virtual Build gives us the tools that we need to be able to compare these, whether it's a it's identical to shared component so this allows me to very quickly focus on just those pieces of the MBOM that are going to be different or unique to my process plan so that when we go back to the process plan and we implement this MBOM for the comfort seat we really can spend our efforts on just focusing on the things that are different. So now we've gone from you know, just the standard seat model being implemented in this process plan. Now I have both the standard and the comfort seat. And now what I can do is just focus on those pieces that are different, right? So again, I can use my tools for validating my manufactured, my bill of material items assignment status. And I can very easily see that there are four components in this model that have not been accounted for yet. So through simple drag and drop, it will create the install operations for me. And I can reorder these or uh, lay them out differently graphically, again, through just click and drag. We'll add our precedence links to make sure that they happen in the sequence that we desire. And now in essence, what I've created is not just a validated process plan, but I've also created a configured process plan. So I can look at this process plan and the impacts on it for both assemblies or both products. You know, what, is this, what does this mean compared to my tack time? What are the operational times? Uh, compared to tack time uh, from one product to another, not only can I do that, but I can look at these as individual configured process plans as well and switch from the standard seat or to the comfort seat uh, just with a click of a button. Okay, so we validated our MBOM, we validated a variant, we validated our process plan with the variant. Uh, the next step above this is to be able to take this and validate it in the context of the plant layout with all of the resource allocation. So just like we could balance and look at the workload for our uh, operations, we can also balance resources, including workers. Okay, So we can see uh, the operations and the operational times compared to the desired tack time for each individual worker. And then also look at our process plan in the context of the plant layout. Replaying and simulating the assembly process. So we'll turn on so we can see the entire plant, different visualization options and then step through these these processes and, and watch the product build up as it goes through the conveyor. So all of everything that you see here is a resource that can be uh, uh, added, like a conveyor belt or a worker or uh, a bin. And all of these can be balanced and associated with operations so that we can understand the impacts and the to timing and to the uh, total manufacturing plan and efficiency and maturity of the manufacturing plan as well.
All right. So now that we've covered visualizing the MBOM, the process plan, and we've validated the process plan, now let's take a, net, a look at how easy it is to document and create work instructions by reusing this process plan and the manufacturing bill of material content. So I'm going to go to the finished process plan here. And we'll take a look at the work instructions that have already been authored. So for each operation, you have the ability inside of virtual build to create a very detailed set of work instructions that go along with the product buildup that we already saw earlier in the demonstration. So we can see the, uh, the active components uh, on the backdrop of what was cre uh, added to the assembly in the preceding operations. What we can also do though is add more textual instructions. So this is where we start to get into the details of the operations uh, and maybe for the, the seasoned user, all they need is the, uh, the text, you know, so we can add uh, instruction text, we can add checks, we can add sign-offs, we can add alerts. So perhaps this procedure changed or we wanted to add a, uh, an additional document to this and have the user confirm and see that uh, through the web browser, then we can add those types of instructions as well as being able to add detailed views. So uh, procedural documents, standard operating procedures that show uh, either 2D images or 3D interactively, you know, what needs to happen in order to insert and uh, snap these components into place and so on and so forth. Okay. So these instructions can be delivered to the shop floor using nothing more than a web browser. And the reason that, that uh, this is so powerful is that these are reflecting exactly the content of the manufacturing bill of material uh, and it's always up to date. So think of, it, think of it this way. What we have is our engineering bill of material in the platform. We have our manufacturing bill of material in the platform. So here we can see we have engineering products. We have our manufacturing bill of materials in the platform. We have our process plan in the platform. We have all of our operations, operational times, precedences in the platform. And we even have all of the work instructions associated with those. So when a change occurs, we have this connected and integrated change management. So changes at any level propagate through the in, throughout the entire process downstream and users have up-to-date information in real time at all times. So I realized this was a very brief presentation but like I said, we really wanted to introduce you to the topic as a catalyst to spur further conversations to help, under, help you understand in your unique environment how the virtual build solution will enable you to, to decrease the time it takes for you to get to the volume that you, you want to hit, to the rate that you want to hit, and to increase output uh, with the virtual validation. So uh, to use the solution to identify manufacturing problems early and avoid late process changes. And because it is integrated with that engineering bill of material, you can get an early start reusing the design data and, and begin developing process plans because you have the ability to implement engineering changes immediately so that you can deliver a very mature process plan and your work instructions on time and on budget. So I wanna thank you for taking the time to join us today. Uh, I appreciate everyone's attention. We have approximately five minutes for questions. If you have anything, please feel free to submit those to the question and answer panel at this time. 
And again, we'd be happy to follow up with you, either reach out to me directly uh, or contact your Inceptra account manager uh, if you'd like to have more information on how this can impact your business. I see there's a question on how are revisions handled. So Bob, uh, that's kind of an in-depth question, uh, but there is a complete revision management system. Uh, so the virtual build solution is a platform. So the, the MBOM has, can have a revision scheme, the process plan can have a revision scheme, and the work instructions can all have revision schemes that can be controlled uh, using uh, business rules, whatever makes sense for, for your particular business. And then as we saw in the demonstration, revisions uh, to the engineering model can be implemented, uh, as I showed, uh, with some compare, compare tools and uh, implementing those in the process plan. Thank you for the question. We'll hang on a little bit for a few more questions. All right, if there are no more questions, I will uh, conclude today's webinar. But like I said, please feel free to reach out to me directly if you have anything that uh, we didn't answer today. Uh, there's a lot of depth to these solutions, which really we can dive into a lot a lot deeper uh, in one-on-one in -on -one follow up. So uh, please feel free to reach out to me directly or to your account manager and we will, uh, and we will uh, address those concerns. Uh, we just had another question come up. We use CATIA V5R26. Is this compatible? Yes, absolutely. So reusing the engineering data can come from CATIA V5, uh, any any version of CATIA V5, uh, SolidWorks, Creo. It really doesn't matter the uh, the CAD source. Uh, what we're typically utilizing the, the most is we're reusing that engineering content. So that data that's already been created, that effort that's already been been done by the engineering team, we can reuse that and communicate that in our bill of materials and process plans. So good question, thank you for that. All right, don't be shy. Two minutes left for questions. And as I mentioned, we can of course follow up afterwards. If you'd like a copy of this presentation, please uh, reach out to me after the webinar and I'll uh, distribute those uh, as requested.